Okay, it's day 155 of this honeydew germination experiment. So there's a lot more uh, robustness in the appearance of these leaves. And there's more flowering going on. And the vines 1 and 2 are kind of growing in parallel to each other. So this is the tip of vine 2. There's a lot of flowering structures, so I expect a lot more flowers. And it appears that since I put these plants in the shade, they've responded very favorably and the leaves have all perked up on the top. And those are the big leaves, so they've been doing all the work. So just to show you again, the leaves on the top are the robust ones and it's really important that these have good health so they can produce enough energy for the rest of the plant to flower and grow and we've started to witness more growth so this is you know vine 2 has shed flowers at each interval not at that one yet but one has two uh, flowers that have been shed there's one there one there And if we look over, if we look over at vine one, you know it's starting to grow. Uh, there's a lot more leaves hanging outside of the pot now. Growth has been pretty good. But if you look at here, you see the tip, the shoot apical meristem of vine three, and that looks like it's starting to flower as well. So this is really great. I mean, you can see several flowering structures there. Um, you know, I don't know how many that is. It could be five, it could be seven. It's just a big fuzzy mess. And you know, this vine three has barely started growing tendrils too. So it's way behind schedule, but there is a internal genetic regulation and you know, seasonal clock, so to speak. So it knows it has to catch up and be on schedule with the rest of the honeydew plants if it wants to get you know, cross pollinated and here you can see below there is another flowering structure so if we go back up this is the shoot ape colmera stem so you know we could see a lot of flower action here soon it's day 157 so these large leaves on the top on the surface of the pot they're getting greener they're never going to be as green as these sweet potato vine leaves but as long as they're somewhat in that same neighborhood or ballpark, I'll be happy. Or at least compared to these new leaves, um, they're not as green, but maybe they never will be. I mean, they've been damaged pretty badly. So I've got good news. Vine 3 is flowering, and that's its first flower. We'll zoom in on that later, but it kind of suggests that all three of these vines are on the same biological clock, so to speak, or calendar because they all germinated at roughly the same time. So down here you have vines two and one. At the moment one doesn't seem to have flowers open. It has a bunch that are coming and going. And vine two is doing well. It has a bunch of flowers that are wilting, but you know, one here, one here, and a bunch more on the way. So here's a close up shot of this flower on vine three. It looks quite nice. Um, yellow is a pretty standard flower color that many bees like. And there's this story of a, you know, on a nature documentary I once saw, on Hawaii basically all the flowers are yellow because the bees don't like anything else. So there's no point in making any other color besides yellow. So that's an example of a coevolution. So you can see a bunch more flower buds here for a uh, shoot apical meristem of vine 3 and you know I'd say at least um, six to eight flowers are on their way pretty soon and they're ultra fuzzy so insect predators and are kind of deterred I don't think this will deter larger grazing mammalian herbivores for example at all so I did some research and this is the most basic botanical research but these are indeed called nodes I've just been using that intuitively for a long time this is what it looks like when the flowers wilt. They're just kind of these white cross sections. Um, it's not woody or anything. I don't know where the white color comes from. Here's a new flower bud and here's another uh, fallen flower site. So, so most of these nodes produce three flowers. So this would be the third flower. And if you look over here, 
That's an example of a node that's produced four flowers. And I think these two might be on their way out. And, uh, this is an example of two flowers in a tendril with a third one on the way. We go over here. Actually, I might stand corrected. I think this one has four, you know, maybe five possibly on the way. So I'm new to this. I don't know what the average statistics are. But um, like this one has a tendril, one broken off flower, three active ones or, you know, coming or going. And let's see. Okay, so that's five, you know. So it seems like most of these nodes can produce up to five flowers, but that number may increase over time. So the length of the stem between each node, say here and here, you know, and this is a shoot at Gomer stem for vine three, that's called an internode, and the length of that determines whether a plant ends up looking like lettuce, which has extremely short internodes before new leaves are sprouted, or looks like a vine like this, like honeydew. So in honeydew, they just have extremely long internodes. Okay, it's day 160 of this honeydew germination experiment. So I think these mature leaves on top of the pot have recovered as much as they're ever going to. And you know, the color differential, the shade of the green, is not all that much different from these younger, newer leaves. And there's uh, been a lot more growth downstairs, so to speak. So this is vine two. And you know, the flowering activity has gone further downstream towards the tip of the vine, the shoot ape clomera stem. Um, there's three full flowers, that one, that one, and that one, um, with plenty more on the way. So growth has been robust. Uh, some of these leaves are kind of small other leaves are bigger, you know, I don't know what the deal is. Uh, development's kind of uneven. This is vine number three, and you can see the shoot apical meristem is producing flowers as we speak, and there's a fully open one. There's another one, and that one is gone already. So this one, you know, these are its leaves. Um, they're not huge or anything, but they're and definitely serviceable. It's not like the case in Vine 2, you know, where some of those were just really small. So this is the node in which three leaves came out of and they're all sort of smallish, medium. Okay, it's day 162 of this honeydew germination experiment. So things are progressing nicely, but I'd like to try some manual pollination if that's possible. No, I don't see any signs of anything bearing fruit soon. So I just kind of got my head close and looked around and I don't see any signs of anything bearing fruit anytime soon. I'm going to try some manual pollination. I have this, you know, floss stick that I use to point out a lot of things in my plant videos, but I know it's not an ideal tool, but it does have, you know, a sharp tip a very thin tip that I can use to get in these flowers. Uh, I looked at some cotton swabs I had in the bathroom that's clearly too big. And let me try giving that a go. So this is line one. Got a little pollen at the end of my uh, lost stick. I can see it. Uh, you won't be able to unless I really zoom in. And I read that there are male and female flowers and that the female flowers kind of have a bulge at the base. You know, from everything I've looked at, I can't really tell between the male and the female flowers. So I'm new to this all. I pretty much don't know what's going on. Um, of course, when we dab the other flowers, pollen we have to come back to the original one and try to you know pollinate that too. Kind of really sticking it in there to make sure 
and get the job done. Separate these structures in the middle, or at least that's the impression I'm under. So, see, I've cycled through all these flowers. There's only five right now. I mean, a lot of flowers have shed. So, the lives of these flowers are very, very short. And that means, you know, at a, any given time, like now, there's only like five available. It's not a very high number. Um, it's also kind of not good because it means there's not enough flowers to necessarily attract pollinators to come to this third story balcony. So I hope that did something and we'll check on this in, you know, a half week or later and see if anything develops at all. I was paying so much attention to what was going on outside of the pot that I didn't bother to look at the inside. You know, I thought nothing would be happening, but, you know, here on Vine 1 you can see right before it falls off the pot, a meristem that's basically growing a new leaf. I think this is vine one as well, and this just came out of nowhere. So we have a you know, medium-sized leaf and a new meristem that's just doing its own thing. I can't really tell whether there are any flowering structures here, but this is promising. It means I'm still doing some things right, and vegetative growth is continuing. So I think with a lot of watering from the bottom and by having most of these leaves in the shade most of the time, that protects from overheating. Although I did read that these uh, melons like honeydew and cantaloupe really need a lot of heat to generate nice fruits. So this is on vine number two. It's very far away from the shade apical meristem now. So I think as the influence of the auxin produced by the shade apical meristem diminishes, Maybe some of these secondary meristems a lot further down, closer to the root system, have free reign to start growing laterally and branching off. So this is all fine too as well. This is a lot closer to the edge of the pot, you know, where it kind of falls off. So, I mean, this isn't all that far away from the shade apical meristem. Maybe it's just at some point in the summer development cycle you know, these plants just start branching out to really, really accelerate the vegetative growth. And we need a lot of that if we're to produce fruits. And I hope my pollination can lead to some fruits. Otherwise, I have no idea how many bees actually get here during the day. It doesn't seem like much. Whenever I look out the window, I don't see anything. 